if you wanted to become an even stronger leader or more motivating and inspiring than you already are, then you would hire a coach to help you get there. To say, you know, I want to up my game and I'm aware that I'm here, but I really want to be here. Can you help me get there? Here on Dream Teams, I've had the pleasure to meet with CEOs who are leading their businesses with great missions, values, and insights to follow. I've spoken to those who have forged new paths, redefined their industries, and set great examples for others. Today, I'm excited to share a conversation I had over Zoom with Richard Levin. Richard offers his take on the value of using executive coaching to grow both your business and your interpersonal relationships. We also discuss how coaching can help you improve your personal growth and tap into your humanity in order to be an effective leader. You won't want to miss this. I am excited to be here with Richard Levin, an esteemed executive coach and the founder of Richard Levin Associates, which is a consortium of about 43 executive coaches. Uh, Richard Levin Associates recently merged with CIFAR, or the Center for Applied Research, which is a Wharton-based consulting firm with about 50 practitioners. Uh, Richard has a doctorate in, psych in psychology and education and over 30 years of experience coaching executives. Richard, welcome. Thank you very much, Mike. Pleasure to be here. Excited to dive into the world of coaching and specifically, you know, executive coaching. So as, as a couple time executive, you know, why, why would I have a coach? Why, what, what's the impetus for me to, to, to want to engage someone in your, in your world? Well, you are pretty well seasoned as is. Um, I would say that if you wanted to become an even stronger leader, or more motivating and inspiring than you already are, then you would hire a coach to help you get there. To say, you know, I wanna up my game and I'm aware that I'm here, but I really wanna be here, can you help me get there? And how would we know along the way that we're getting there? It's, it's kind of like the old adage about therapy. If somebody goes to see a therapist and really wants to change, they will, but you have to really want to. And I think it's pretty similar in coaching if you have the, the inner desire, the, the, the burn, the drive to want to change some things about yourself as a leader, pretty likely to get there. How about finding that interpersonal dynamic, someone that you feel that you can really learn from and listen to? Because it, it's not always business coaching. It, it, it often is personal development. It could be a blend of both. How do you make sure that, that, that chemistry is there? Uh, that is such a great question. Thank you for asking that, because I think that's really the secret ingredient. Um, I think that's what makes a coaching engagement successful or not, is the chemistry. So what we do, at least in our firm, is we will provide the potential coachee, the leader, with probably three names of coaches. You know, I will, I will interview them or somebody in my firm will interview them and try to figure out what it is they're looking for gauge what their personality is like, um, and the combination of who that person is as a person, plus what they're trying to achieve, plus maybe the industry they're in, we can look at our array of coaches and say, you know something, these three would be the best fit for this person. So we'll offer them up. The leader interviews those three and says, I feel the most connection to number two. Right, right. I think that we, we should not be looking at this firewall between the personal and the business side. I think there's a seamlessness there. I think what we're trying to do is encourage somebody to bring their whole self into the workplace, whether they are as a CEO or on a team or any place within an organization is you want to create that seamlessness. So I think dividing it up and saying, well, it's going to be 80% business, 20% personal, probably wouldn't make a lot of sense in my view. The reason I pushed on this was, I mean, I can go to Wikipedia or even better sources to find out business knowledge, but I can't go many places to find, you know, personal development knowledge that is tailored for me. It, it seems like right. it's a, such a scarce and beautiful and important thing. Right. I, I think you're absolutely right. And again, I think it's the combination. You know, it's, it's still you as Mike, you the human who is the CEO of your firm. Um, 
you can't check yourself at the door and say, okay, now I'm in work mode and you know, to go into a totally different mindset. It doesn't happen that way. Yep. So I think capturing the essence of who the person is and developing all parts of themselves, that's the best kind of coaching engagement. How much time, and it, maybe it depends, um, do you spend on personal interaction, you know, personal issues versus the team dynamics that are set up at companies, the people you work with, either your peers, your boss, your, your direct reports? I think that it's a very high percentage, nearly 100% interpersonal to be able to motivate and inspire team members or colleagues, um, to be able to get where you want them to go. You have a vision as a CEO. You have expectations you want to communicate to your followers in terms of how they can um, implement the vision uh, because you're, you're working with people. You're, you, you have people following you somewhere as a leader. And how do you encourage people to follow you? Well, you've got to use some basic um, psychological and sociological skills to get them there. Oh, that's great. That's great. And, and you, must, you must have, I noticed that you are a Hogan um, certified yeah. practitioner. Are, are there other tools and assessments or things like 360s that you use a lot to triangulate on, uh, on an engagement? There, there, there are two. Okay. Um, and I, I would say this whether I was talking to you or not, honestly. Um, I think that predictive index is one of the, the cleanest and easiest to use. And it gives you really good data to spring off from. <clears throat> And the other thing we use is our own 360 instrument. It's interview based. So it's not digital electronic. It's something where I would just sit down with you, um, sit down with people who you touch. Um, you don't want a random set of people. You want people whose input you really value and trust. And those are the people I will talk to. And that combined with, for example, um, predictive index or talent optimization or whatever product you want to be focusing on mm -hmm. or Hogan. Okay. Um, combining that with 360 gives the coach an objective roadmap to go with. Well, that's great. Uh, well, Richard, this has been a, this has been a pleasure. I've, I've loved learning from you about coaching. Uh, you are so fluid and facile with this. It's, it's clear that you found your, your calling. Uh, thank you thank for you sharing somebody. with us. Oh, it's my um, pleasure. Really, great conversation. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great day. You too.